Are we working? Are we live? Let me see. Looks like it's starting up. Sweet. What's up, Carl? You're the you're the first one on. Congratulations. You've won first. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's going to be, like, claiming it. So uh, there's a whole bunch of new laptops out, and I wanted to do an overview of them. I'm making this giant spreadsheet of all the new laptops. Hey, everybody. Man, so many people hop on. Hey, 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 hey. So, so the, the goal for this stream, like, is just to talk and hang out and talk about all these new laptops that are coming out. There's so many. There's, like, 50, 60 at least, I don't know, maybe more, especially if you count all the little iterations of different versions of the different laptops. Hoping to see the Triton 500. I haven't taken a look at that one yet. There's been literally, literally so many models. So I've got one of them behind me right now. The GT75 by MSI with the new 9th gen. I made a video about it uh, yesterday. Released it yesterday at least. So uh, one of the things that I thought would be fun in doing this live stream is if there's any of you guys out there that are looking for a laptop that uh, would like a recommendation for a laptop, I'd love to, I guess, hear what your needs are, and then maybe I can make some recommendations. Can you make a good PC with $200, says Raven. I doubt it, dude. That's, that's tough. Maybe if you're using used parts and you're finding good deals, you could probably make a good PC for that much. So, okay, so we're taking a look at these laptops. Here's the list we've accumulated so far. Um, now, these laptops from up here to down to here, over here-ish, these ones are not the new 9th gen processors. And then starting here is the ones we've put into the list so far. We're working on currently expanding this list out. And you can see that uh, we've already added 20-ish new laptops. Is a MacBook better or a new laptop? My take on MacBooks are that they're kind of a steaming pile of doo-doo <laughs> as far as like performance goes. But uh, if you really like the aesthetic and you like the feel and you don't really need a high-powered machine, there's nothing wrong with buying a MacBook if, that, if you're just going to like watch Netflix and do emails and browse Facebook and stuff. So... I have an HP NVX 360 with a broken screen. What should I do? Well, you can potentially fix it yourself. It's possible to replace the screen. It involves taking apart the laptop, uh, taking apart the hinge, and then taking the screen out of the encasement and putting a new one in. Um, if the whole thing is too busted, then you might have to get a new laptop or get like a whole like a bigger replacement, which may or may not be possible depending on the laptop. I don't know. Okay, so if you want a laptop recommendation, what I need to know is your, your price point, um, how much you want the laptop to weigh, and then uh, I guess your, your goal usage, like are you trying to play games, what type of games, what game do you want to play? Um, and I need this all in one post so I don't have to like dig through a whole bunch of different posts. So let me, let me write this up real quick. So the things I need to know are price to uh, you gaming uh, high power gaming okay, I'm gonna write these on the screen here so you guys can see it okay so first thing I need to know is price second thing I need to know is uh, what you're gonna use it for so game uh, gaming Video editing, um, Netflix, like like cat, like I guess, mm, just gaming or casual or productivity. 
like uh, rendering there. And then the third thing I need to know is size requirement. What size do you need um, of screen? So screen size. And then I need to know your weight, how much you want it to weigh. And then, hmm. Yeah, okay, so let's start with that. All right, so we're looking at price, the use, the screen size, and the weight you're looking for. Oh, and then uh, I guess battery life. Do you need battery life or not? Okay. So Gerald Acomp says, my price point is $700, mostly gaming and campus work. Okay. So, all right, so we're starting with this one. By, I'm going to look at his name here too. Okay, so Gerald Akami, he says, price point is $700, mostly gaming and campus work. Um, all right, so we are primarily dealing with more expensive laptops here, but there's a couple of new laptops that might fit your price point. Let's dive into this. I'm going to bring in a new window here. Okay, and uh, we're looking at just, I like just pulling things from Amazon because it's simple. And also I have an affiliate link there, so it does help me if you guys do buy through Amazon. You don't have to. All right, so the Acer Nitro 5 is probably my go-to. When you say $700, Acer Nitro 5 is my go-to uh, for recommendations. And they just came out with a new version of it. I don't know if the new version is going to be priced at $700, but you can see that it goes as low as that one's for a Ryzen chip, though. I wouldn't get the Ryzen chip for what you're looking for. Um, so here is the last year version with a one terabyte SSD. Are you kidding me? Is that for real? Uh, 60 hertz display GTX 1050. Okay. It doesn't say whether it says NVIDIA 1050 or 1050 Ti. I don't, what is it, what it comes with this this particular model? I mean, come on. Uh, let's go down to the settings here. That's so obnoxious when they don't actually list. They like list options, right? Does it say what it comes with? It says it comes with an NVIDIA card. Well, I guess I wouldn't buy this one because this one's this one's a bad idea. Um. That one's not being very clear. This one is more clear though. So, all right. So this one's 689. It has an i5 8300H quad core mobile processor, a 1050 Ti graphics card. That's pretty good. Uh, and so this is gonna like I actually reviewed basically this model right here. Now the bit down, the main downside here is it only has eight gigs of RAM, but you can always upgrade that later if you need to. Um, so. I did do a full review on this one, and I can link the review. It's actually very similar to this. So let me put the link to the Acer Nitro 5. There's the link to that. Um, now, there's let me, some other ones. And there's a new Nitro 5 with a 9th gen processor and, it, and a 1660, 1650 graphics card, I think. Um, but I don't know if it's going to be fully listed here yet. It's announced. It may not be being for sale uh, for sale yet. Let's see if I can just get it. So you might have to wait. If you want to get something a little more powerful and it costs a little bit more, you're going to have to wait a little bit. So I don't know if I'd recommend buying right now until at least these are being listed. It's the new Nitro 5 with the GTX 1660. Um, so... I'm not sure there's Acer's official website. Let's go check that out. Okay, so here's the Nitro 5. Do they have the new versions? That they, they have them announced, but let's see if they have the new versions out on here or not. So Nitro 17 has a 17-inch display, 144 hertz 
display two. Yeah, none of these are the new versions yet. Okay. So this is this is all still brand new. There's so many new laptops right now that are being announced. Um, so if you need to buy like today, I think the Nitro 5 is probably your best bet. There's going to be some other options out there. Um, another option would be the Dell G5. It's going to be a little bit more than 700. Here's one with 700. So here's... This one comes with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. No, that that's not possible. I'm double checking that because there's no way it's that. That is really good specs if that's the case. Um, i5, A300H, quad core. What is up with these? Like they list all these different options here. 8, 12, 16, 32. There's no way that it comes with... 32 gig. Oh, it says up to 32. That's what it is. Okay, up to. It's got to be just 8 gigs of RAM. Um, I would assume I would assume this would not come with uh, as much stuff. But this is another great option if you're looking for a laptop on a budget. Um, let me link this one in the chat as well. But this one is going to have a 1050 Ti, which is going to play games really well. Uh, and it's going to have a quad-core processor as well. I mean, that's basically what you're looking at, the i5-8300H right here. So let me just put a link to this one in the chat as well. Dell G7. So that one's 699. Um, and, and it's so annoying that it's hard to tell exactly what's going to come with this particular unit. But assume the most basic of all of this, maybe a 128 gig SSD and a 500 gig HDD, which those are easy to upgrade and cheap to upgrade later on down the road too, if you need to upgrade those. Um, but the important thing is that it comes with a 1050 Ti, which is gonna play games really well right now. And then it's got that quad core processor that's gonna be able to do a lot of good stuff, so. Um, okay, taking a look at a new, new one. We've got, uh, So I've got a link to this whole spreadsheet right here that I've got in front of me. There's a link in the video description for this live stream right now if you guys want to pull that up later or right now. And I've got links to pretty much all the laptops on the right here too so you can see uh, see this. And now when you're viewing it, I believe you can sort it. And so you can say, I want to sort by price. And you can like set the price points to be varying different levels of price. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so all right, taking a look at... Poke Bleach Player says price below $1,000. So he's got a $1,000 price point. Weight around five pounds. Uh, everyday basic use, VLC, download movies, etc. Screen about 15 inches is fine. Normal battery life is fine. i6 and newer if possible. Okay, so i6 isn't really a thing. Um, but we can try to work with this. All right, so we're looking at $1,000, 15 inch and weighs less than five pounds in just general use. He doesn't say he wants to play games on it, okay? Um, taking a look here. Hmm, this is interesting because you're looking at a thousand dollar price point and you don't care about having, so you're really, you're kind of, in my mind, you're looking at like a ultra book. So one of the ones that I kind of jumped towards is like the Lenovo Ultrabooks. I'm not sure if the Yoga books are cheap enough for that, though. Looks like some of them are. But the question is if you want to have like, like this one can flip around into tablet mode, which is really cool. And I have owned one of these, uh, not this particular model, but one very similar to this a few years ago, and it was pretty nice. Um, So like if I was just looking for a general use, I didn't care about gaming at all, then I would say going for something like this is going to provide you like a tablet-like experience and a lot of versatility at the same time having good battery life and a lot of portability. Um, I don't know. Like, I, like it's hard for me to make a full recommendation because my specialty is primarily in gaming laptops, you know? But this is kind of where I would, I would generally try to push people towards. Uh, but that's, that said, you've got lots of options out there.
Um, okay, so if you want recommendations, right? If you want a recommendation for what laptop to get, I need this. Fill out this little questionnaire. I need your price, what you're going to use it for. Are you going to do gaming? Are you just going to use it for casual use? Are you going to use it for rendering of some kind? What's your usage? Um, then I need your screen size. Uh, what size of screen are you looking for? The weight you want and the kind of battery life you need. Okay, taking a look. Okay, so Apple Guy 80 says I want the razor blade. So Apple Apple Guy 80 says let me get his name here too. Apple Guy 80 says I will, I kind of want the razor blade 15 base model. I'm not sure. I would go with a 15 inch laptop, some gaming, a lot of editing, weight can be any. So you don't care about the weight. You mainly care about the performance for the money, I'm guessing. So if you're going for the razor blade base model, your price is probably about $1,600. Um, and if your price is $1,600, let's, let's see here. So let's first of all take a look at that razor blade base model. So I have been hands-on with this particular laptop. I did a full review on the razor blade base model. So I can link to that as well. Uh, let's see here. Let me pull that up real quick. So taking a look here, the razor blade ballot base model, where is it? Did a review in early here it is. Dual store. So the cool thing about the razor blade base model is that you get lots of storage for the money. So that's the it's it's a much more economical purchase than your typical razor blade because the razor blade's not really like a lot of bang for the buck, you know. Where the razor blade base model, it, it's 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 very classically designed. It's got a great overall chassis, very good build quality. Um, and you're getting a lot of bang for the buck in terms of storage and performance, too, because it's a GTX 1060 in there. And that GTX 1060 is going to perform really well, play pretty much all games really, really well. The main downside, I think, to the base model is that you're not getting a high refresh rate screen, which is a big bummer. I think if you want to do a lot of gaming, serious gaming, uh, it's not going to be as good. So, all right, so here's another one. So, Pina. Pina Price says... Let me see if I can make this bigger so you guys can see this text a little bit better. Okay, Pina Price says $3,000, less than $3,000. Thin and light laptop, good battery for productivity, easy gaming on AAA titles, more than 60 FPS on Ultra, good for college work, 15.3 inch RTX graphics, and I'm lost in the options. Okay, so this, this is gonna help this spreadsheet Pina is going to really help you out. So in this spreadsheet that I have, I have a link in the spreadsheet in the top of my um, video description right now. This has got basically all the options out there. Okay, so the way you can use this spreadsheet, uh, I'm not sure if you can just take this spreadsheet and copy it into another spreadsheet or not, or if you can do this on your own when you're just viewing it, because I, all I can see is when I'm viewing it. I can definitely change it all. Um, but this might change it for everybody, right? So um, first of all, I would say to, to Pena is that you've got a $3,000 budget. You should be able to get like an RTX 2070. Uh, and the one right now that I think I would recommend the most would be either the Aorus 15 uh, or alternatively the... Asus ROG Strix Scar the third. Okay, so let's take a quick look at those laptops. So if you've got three thousand dollars, if you got less than three thousand dollars, let's give you this will actually give you some wiggle room because this is, these laptops actually cost less than that. Um, so let's take a look at the Asus one first. ROG 
ninety seven fifty h twenty seventy so here's some options so this is this is then I guess the question here too is how thin and light do you want it to be all right because uh me personally i would i I just really wouldn't buy a laptop that is like point eight inches thick or thinner because it's just it cuts down on the cooling too much and you're just not getting the most of your the most bang for your buck you know out of the out of the laptop so Okay, um, I think this is it right here. So this laptop is not out yet. I believe it ships. You can pre-order it now, and it ships on May 27th. So you got to wait about a month to get this one. But you can see it's it's a really, really stunningly designed laptop. Very overall thin and light. It, it's uh, like almost exactly one inch thick, um, and the cool part about this laptop is you're just getting so much performance for the money. $2,300, okay? And it's got the new i7-9550H, and then it's also got the RTX 2070 uh, in it. That's a full RTX 2070, and that actually performs better than the RTX 2080 Max-Q. So you're going to get more performance than the RTX 2080 Max-Q laptops uh, that cost oftentimes over $3,000. And the really, really standout feature for this new Strix Scar the Third is that it's got a 240 hertz uh, IPS type panel. Okay, so this is an extremely high refresh rate display, which is awesome. It's one of the first new uh, RTX, or it's one of the first new 240 hertz laptops out there. Um, so this is this is if you're gonna search this, this is the G531 right here. Okay, and this one also provides a lot of flexibility, which is really cool because it's got a dual storage option. You have, I think, one or two M.2 slots and then one two and a half inch hard drive bay. I'm not sure exactly how many M.2s. I think it's one and one, so I think two total of two storage slots. Uh, but the cool thing here is that it's it's thick enough that you're gonna get tons of of performance out of the machine. Really take advantage of the hardware. It probably will not be throttled much, if at all, uh, on the CPU. And then you got the 240 hertz display, which is just killing. And the whole thing weighs like a little over five pounds, which is really nice. Um, so I'm gonna put a link in the chat to this one. So this is the. I'm gonna put that in there. Then I'll just. Okay. Um, and then. Now, Lord of Bees, I did. I just want to say real quick, Lord of Bees commented about me losing my dogs, and I want to say thank you to all of you guys out there that have been supporting me through uh, all your comments on my last video on my main channel, and I really appreciate it. So, um, yeah. Okay, so the, what was the other one I mentioned? Okay, the Oris 15. All right, so taking a look at the... I'm not sure if this one has been officially announced... Wars 15x9. Let me put 9758. Okay. So this is the this is the previous version. This is like a great bang for the buck. Just like the Strix Scar is. It's got a really good overall platform and performance for the money. Uh, let me pull up the info that uh, the Gigabyte sent me. Gigabyte is actually in the process of sending me uh, an ORS 15. Hopefully, it, it actually comes through. But I gotta pull up the document they sent over. This is the PR announcement for the ORS 15 that I'm about to pull up. And uh, so this is a laptop that's designed to be very thin and very light and very portable. It's a 15 inch laptop, uh, and it's got the RTX 2070. It's got an i7-9750H, uh, so the new 9th gen processors, which is really nice. Um, and then it's got a 240 hertz display as well. And I believe it's going to cost right around 2200 if I recall correctly. So 5.29 pounds. Um, and you can, get three different you can get three different versions of this. Let me pull this up and make this a little bigger. You can get it with the RTX 2070, RTX 2060, and the 1660 Ti. Now, the 1660 Ti is kind of like the new 1050 Ti, so it's like slightly weaker than the RTX 2060, and it just provides more bang for the buck. 
Um, so the the Oris 15, I think, is going to be a really, really good option for people out there looking for something small and light and can really like power through games like crazy. Because like I said, it's going to come with this new Sharp Igzo 240 hertz anti-glare display. It's, I, I really want to see this display in action because I actually use the 240 hertz monitor right here on my on my display. But you know, that's what I use primarily. Um, so let me take a look at the comments again. All right. So a lot of people asking for advice, right? So why not the Zephyrus? So Zavankos Gaming Pro says, why not the Zephyrus? Um, I am going to talk about that. So the Zephyrus is not a bad option. Okay, I'm not saying the Zephyrus is a bad option. It's, it's certainly a decent one. Um, but let's take a look. 9750H, ROG, RTX. I should come up with one of them. Okay. So here's a ROG Zephyrus. What is this? The GX531. So this is the thinner, basically, version of the Strix Scar. Now, the number one downside to this is that the thermals are just not going to be as strong as with the Strix Scar. So the Strix Scar is thicker, which means it can have uh, thicker and beefier heat pipes. And it's just going to be able to really take and give you more performance um, for the money in, in the machine. Now, I'm not sure if this is the full RTX 2070 or if it's is the Max Q. And it's oftentimes, yeah, this is the Max Q. See, there you go. I mean, that's, that's, it's the same price as the Strix Scar, right? Um, but you're going to get lower performance because it's the Max Q version. Now, it, 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 in my opinion, max Q versus non max Q comes down to two main things. Um, do you want the most performance for the money, or do you want the most performance for the size? If you want the most performance for the size, go with max Q because you are going to be able to shave off like a half pound to a pound of weight and maybe a quarter inch of thickness. Uh, but if you want the most performance for the money, well, a laptop that's going to last you as long as possible is going to be able to keep your, uh, you know, it's going to be able to keep your, your, I guess, be a good performing laptop for many, many years. Then I would say go with a non Max Q laptop. Um, so Dark Dude Six One Nine says price is two hundred to three hundred dollars. Casual use, study purposes, screen size is whatever. Light and thin as possible, and battery life needs to be fairly long. Second hand is also an option too, and that's kind of the way I would direct you. If you're looking for two hundred to three hundred dollars, your market is going to be very, very slim, right? So you're going to need to, I don't know, be looking at honestly, you got to look to. If I were doing it, I'd probably look to eBay maybe, um, and I would go probably search for Ultrabook. And I would look at, hmm. So the main downside to buying a used, the number one main downside to buying a used laptop, in my opinion, is that the battery life will not be as good as a brand new laptop because the battery will have been used a lot, most likely. Um, ooh, interesting. See, this is this is not a bad right here. This this looks like a really decent option. Let's see. Look at this one. So this is a 13.3 inch display. It says 4K QHD. That's like two different resolutions. I don't know why they list both resolutions, but um, you can see this one's super thin, super light. Um, it's got an Intel Core M Y. So this is a really slow processor. Um, it's going to be a very slow processor, and it, but it's going to be able to do everything you need for just basic functionality, you know, like watching Netflix and stuff like that. Um, writing Word documents and things of that nature. It'll be able to do those things just fine. So if you're just needing light use, this is going to be pretty sweet. It weighs 2.6 pounds. Um, originally, it was priced over $1,400. And look at the price on this thing. 390 bucks. That's, that's, that's pretty freaking amazing. Because um, this is going to be like a really high quality display, uh, an okay-ish performance processor. You're not looking at, yeah. You're not, if you're not looking to do video editing or gaming, it'll be fine. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. It seems, it looks like it's in very new condition too. It looks brand new. So, I mean, this is, if you're looking to buy used, this would be a perfect example of like, hey, this is a great deal right here. Probably. Um, you never know. Maybe there's something secretly wrong with it, but 
that's where you have like the eBay return policy, so you can get a refund through PayPal if something's wrong with the laptop. Um, or at least, as long as you buy the right one, make sure that there's like they, they allow for a dead on arrival policy where you can always return it if the laptop's dead when you get it. Okay, so Kilkenny wants me to let's take a look at Kilkenny's request. Okay. So I'll paste that there. I'm just going to move these down because right now Carla is filling in all of these other new models. She's helping me make this list. Okay, so Kilkenny. All right, Kilkenny says, I want a simple laptop that can handle 4K video editing and will be able to run any game at a maximum of 60 hertz. My budget is $1,300 max and a screen that has accurate colors as possible. I don't care about size. Um... 60 hertz is my budget. Okay. Oh, well, I just copied half of it. Okay. So $1,300 max. Screen has accurate colors as possible. So 4K video editing laptop. Do you care about the screen being 4K? I think that's a pretty important thing to keep in mind. So, uh, And you want to be able to do games on it, too. So thinking here. You'll definitely want... Something like, hmm, if I was on the budget and I wanted something that was $1,300, let's just take a look at Amazon real quick. You, honestly, if you're doing a lot of video editing, Kilkenny, I know you're a video editor. So uh, if you're going to be doing video editing and you want a 4K display, and you want a budget of $1,300, something like the Dell XPS 15 might be a great option. So right here is $1,300 for this. And let's see if this is the 4K. Let me put the 4K into the title because it will probably come up as 4K this way. Um, you don't want, like, if there's if there's anything that you can possibly get, you want to get the new processor if you're going to do video editing. So the i7 8758 right here, 4K touch, touch display, 16 gigs of RAM. Um, the nice thing about 16 gigs of RAM is you can always upgrade it later. Um, but like something like this might be a good option for you. Um, it, having an NVIDIA graphics card in a video editing machine I think is pretty important because it allows you to have uh, NVIDIA CUDA acceleration, even if it's just a small one. Um, so something like this might be a decent option for you. It'll let you do games at 60 frames per second. It'll still let you do video editing, and it's still very good overall size and weight. Now, um, I'm going to take you over to HID Evolution's website and take you into some of the new ones here too because there's some new laptops. Um, like if you want the best bang for the buck, some of the best bang for the buck right here is in the Evox systems. Like They're based on the Clevo chassis, um, and you can customize them oftentimes to get exactly what you want or need. Like you, like the nice, you know, like if you need a 4K screen, you can get like a really high-end 4K screen in some of these. So is this sorted by cheapest already? Let me see. I think it is sorted by cheapest. So it's already starting so expensive at 12.99. Here's actually the thinnest, or here's the cheapest one. Let's see what this one's got. 144 hertz display though, not a 4K display. No, this is not going to do anything for you. Um, okay, let's take a look at let's take a look at the new Dell Dell laptops in this situation because the new Dell laptops might actually fit your bill. So one nice thing about the 4K displays is that the 4K displays typically are geared towards better overall colors. G series laptops. All right, so we're looking at the G5. Let's take a look at the G5. And yeah, this is really still focused on gaming. Yeah, I'm thinking right now my recommendation is that is that uh, Dell XPS 15. If you're looking for something that's thin and light and still has a reasonable price, Let's see what the new prices are looking at and seeing if there's any new of the, any of the new CPUs. Why are they not listed here? 
I guess Dell hasn't updated their website yet, but you can see the price does get up there depending on how you get this thing configured. Yeah, all these are just 1080p displays too, but... Ooh, well, I guess it's only 100% sRGB. So one thing you're going to want to look at, Kilkenny, when you're, if you're looking for a video editing machine, you really want to look for something that has 100% Adobe RGB for colors. Okay, taking a look at some of the new ones here. I saw someone saying, okay, Jacob Mills says, when is the best time to buy, uh, buy these recent 2019 laptops? Is there any chance that they go on sale anytime soon? Thanks. Um, let me pull this comment in right here. So right here, when is the best time to buy these 2019 laptops? Is there a chance that they could go on sale anytime soon? So the best time to buy the laptops is soon here, like right around right now and in the next few weeks or month or so. Uh, and I'm probably going to make a video about this. Like Time to buy a laptop is like right now because the prices on the existing laptops are going to go down. Um, and you'll be able to buy also a lot of used laptops that are in very good condition because people bought last year's and they just want to get the newest thing. So they buy like the new version, right, with the new RTX cards or the new ninth gen processors or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, so so basically, I would say uh, if you're looking for the best best deal possible. Just keep your eyes, you know, keep your eyes peeled for deals, because like I know Dell did like a 17% off discount on all their laptops on their website recently, like a, like a few weeks ago or something like that. So that was like a huge deal, because if you get like a $2,000 laptop, that's like $180 off discount. Um, and uh, some of the other some of the other deals I saw was like on Best Buy or Micro Center, like getting like the Strix Scar 2 for like with the new RTX 2070 for only like 1800 bucks, which is like insanely good deal. Um, that's like so much performance for the money. So uh, really keeping your, you know, just like eyes to the ground, checking the websites regularly to see, like, like basically what I would say is like find the model that you care about, the one that you think will fit your needs, and then look on a bunch of different websites. Check Newegg, check Amazon, check Best Buy, check uh, Micro Center, and then look at their different prices to see which one has the best price, and then uh, over the next month or so, just monitor it, especially if it's like a previous generation, like if it's like the GTX uh, 1070 or, or if it's the, you know, uh, the previous processor, because the, the older processor, the 8th gen processor really is still a very good processor. And you'll be able to get a, a decent discount, like 50 to $100 off for sure on an 8th gen processor. Okay, Shivan Curdy asks, what do you think of the new Acer Triton 500? Uh, RTX 2060 for 17.99. Okay, let's take a closer look at that. Triton 500 RTX 2060. <clears throat> All right. So I believe this is the guy. This is the dude right here. Um, I, I have not had my hands on this guy yet, but all the reviews I've seen on this one is very, very positive. Um, some of the reviewers that I trust have tested this out and have had uh, good thermals with it, like good reasonable levels of performance. So I think this one is another good option for someone looking to, to buy a laptop. The, I think the main downside, I think, with this is that you're looking at... A price point of $17.99 for only an RTX 2060. And I mean, RTX 2060 is not bad by any means. So RTX 2060 is going to perform really, really well. Um, but it, the simple fact is, just for a little bit more, you can get an RTX 2070. And I think that's the main downside here. Um, the, so the main positives for this one, though, is that it's, it's very thin. This is a very thin chassis. And an RTX 2060, uh, non-Max-Q, uh, this is going to be really good performance for the size, reasonably good performance for the money. But if you're willing to go for something that's a little bit thicker, let me just, let me, well, let me see. Let me see. RTX 2060. Um, let me, let's do some price comparisons. So the Aorus 15. Okay, so here's an Aorus 15 with an RTX 2060. It only costs $16.49, so if you can save $150 by going to the Aorus 15 here, 
Um, and this laptop will almost for sure cool that RTX 2060 extremely well. Um, and this is the, the 8750H. Ooh, this is this is a great deal right here. Honestly, um, I would recommend this one probably over the Triton, at least just on paper, because not only are you getting an RTX 2060, you're getting a high refresh rate screen. It's still very thin and very light overall. You also get a 512 gig SSD and a two terabyte hard drive. So you're getting two and a half terabytes of storage space with this machine right here, which seems pretty freaking insane. Um, I'll put a link to the Aorus 15 here. Uh, 1649. Okay. Stephen Curdy says, I was looking at the Aorus 15, but I'm scared about battery life since I need it for college. That's good. That's good. Good call. Um, how much battery life do you need? Uh, you know, like, do you need like a minimum four hours or like kind of like what's your your minimum amount of battery life? Do you have any plugs anywhere where you go? Um, if you have plugs, I would say your minimum would probably be like three hours. But ideally, you'd love to have like six, you know, if, if you're going to be traveling like all day walking around with it, you know, at least four hours. I, I think the Aorus 15 will probably get you to four hours, but I'm not sure. Let's take a look. I don't think it comes with NVIDIA Optimus. Let me go ahead and pull up the. Uh, let me pull this up again. Um, so this is the new Aorus 15. So it's only got a 62 watt hour battery in the Aorus 15, which is really not that big. That's like a medium sized battery life. So a medium sized battery. The question is, does it have Optimus? If it doesn't have Optimus, then and I don't think it does. Uh, you're probably only looking at about two and a half to three hours of battery life. Most likely, at most, if you're like being very conservative. Um, so, does the Triton? What does the Triton have? Let me let me take a look back to the Triton again. Um, Triton 500 RTX 2060 review. Do, 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 do. I don't trust these people's reviews. I trust this one. Okay. So Notebook Check does a very good job of testing their laptops. And here is the battery life of the Triton. So you can get, with the Triton, you can get five and a half hours of battery um, when you're doing basically nothing on it. If you're just like typing a Word document with Wi-Fi off and brightness lowered. Uh, three hours, 10 minutes of web surfing. You know, so... Uh, the Triton has reasonable battery life. Nothing special, but reasonable. Let's take a look at some of the performance of the Triton here. Um, Cinebench R15, it only got 1,019 points. That's kind of disappointing. I was hoping it would be higher. Um, so that's a bummer. Um, so you're not looking at the best CPU performance, but that's going to be fine for gaming. But if you're looking to do a lot of rendering, it's certainly far from ideal. 93% sRGB on the Triton. That's about this par average for the course. Um, 300 nits brightness. It's about average, maybe a little bit above average. Um, yeah, I don't know. A huge part of me says yes to the Triton. That I like. I can I can sign off and say that is not a terrible laptop. That's going to be a good laptop for a lot of people out there. Um, so. Like, if you're worried about battery life, I would guess the Triton's going to be a little bit better than the Aorus. All right. Okay. Amal Kotin says, please suggest a budget laptop for our software, which are not graphic intensive. So uh, if you guys want me to recommend something for you guys, I need you to give me these five things right here. Give me your price, the what you're going to use it for, the screen size, the weight, and the battery life. Car fan says, please check out the Flex 5. I think it's a good option for most people. And it goes on sale for $600 at Costco very often. I don't even know what the Flex 5 is. It's a, new, it's a Lenovo laptop. Okay. Let's take a look. Okay. So this one's $1,199. It's got an MX130. 
and an i5 50U. So that's this is basically like an ultra book. It'll be able to play super basic games. Um, let me see if there's a few different. There's got to be a few different models of this available with different prices. This one's 999. Wish they had the different models listed right here. Okay, so here's 599. MX130, backlit keyboard, fingerprint reader, wireless Bluetooth. Hmm. i5-8250U, so this is going to be a slower processor. Um, the main downside to these super budget Ultrabook processors in particular is that they're just kind of, they're designed to run really cool to have good battery life, which is nice, but sometimes they honestly struggle even playing Netflix um, smoothly. So I would say get this, but at least have a return day policy, 90 day return policy. So I mean, if it, if you can't do the things you need to do, you can always return it, I guess. All right. Uh, close that. Okay. All right. Amal Keaton set coat Amal and Mal Kotian says under seven hundred and fifty dollars gaming and casual fifteen inch weight should be manageable battery life five to six hours at least so seven hundred and fifty dollars that's a another tough price point let's go I, this is where I think the I think the Dell G five or the Acer Nitro five once again is going to be your best option. So right here, 2019 Dell G5, that's got an 8th gen processor, 1050 Ti. Uh, and the, the, the downside here is they're not really telling you the exact specifications, but I would assume the lowest for all of these. This is going to be a basic functionality and have some upgradability. Um, so this is probably the one I would recommend. That or the Ni Acer Nitro. So under 750 budget I don't know those are, those are pretty de decent options Kill Kenny what do you think the nicest looking laptop on the market is I'm just curious probably the razor blade I think they just they look freaking amazing So Shivan Curdy says every lap he he really needs a laptop that's about eighteen hundred dollars U.S. Then, so for an eighteen hundred dollar gaming laptop, let's let's talk eighteen hundred dollar gaming laptop. Um, let's go back to the sheet here because we can actually sort the sheet. I don't want to mess up what she's doing, but we have a whole bunch of very reasonably priced laptops here for less than eighteen hundred dollars so we've got the omen 17 here we've got the acer predator helios we've got the alienware 17 alienware 15 like there's so many options, and I would really encourage you if you're struggling to find something within your price point, um, check out this list. There's not very many super budget laptops on here yet, but I will put more of those out on here. So, Let me give you another one. Um, I, I talked about this before, but I'm just going to just link to it again. But check out the Nitro 5 as well, because that one's also... If you're looking at a $700 budget, that's another one. I, I did a full review on them, so check out the review. Just Google it. About $500 for university students, a computer science student and some gaming relatively big 15 70 inch wait as light as possible better life four to six hours 
So 500 pounds, what does that translate to U.S.? About 500 U.S. dollars? Pretty close, right? $645. So that's very, that's very, very low budget. So for that budget, if your budget's that low and you still want something that has decent performance, buy used is what I would say. Um, so, and I, and I would probably be looking at like an Acer Predator Helios 300. Let's see if we can find one that's used. Yeah. Looks like they're going up above. I don't think you'd be able to find one for less than $800, $900. Even for a used one. Okay. So that's a little bit out of your price range. Then maybe a Dell G7 would be right in your price range. Pretty sure a Dell G7 will be right in your price range. GTX 1060, 2 SSD, 8 gigs of RAM, 8750H. Yeah, I think this one would be a great option. Getting a used Dell G7 or maybe even a brand new one if your price is can go up enough for a Dell G7. What's the most cheap laptop? Probably just like Chromebooks or something like that if you want to call them a laptop. Okay, Dave Prizo says, any nice new laptops with open sockets? Something to upgrade to a 9900K. Uh, so the primarily the new ones that came out were actually laptop non-socketable CPUs. So you're probably looking at not many options. Um, but if I were to recommend one that has a sockable CPU, I think the best sockable CPU one right now is the Alienware 51M. But that one's very expensive. Um, it's the one that I'm actually that that I own. But and that's so even if you got like a, a big a big old budget, you can get an Area 51M. But if your budget is lower, one that you want to like be able to buy and then upgrade over time, probably your best bet is probably the Clevo, like P750 TMR or something like that. Mr. Enki007, best bang for around $2,000. Uh, that is, I think, your Strix Scar. Uh, you know, I'll keep saying this, but I think it's just freaking crazy good. Um, let's see here. The new one, the Strix Scar 9750, right here. This is the one I'd recommend for around two thousand dollars. You can get this. You can get the other versions with the 8750H. Save a little bit of money. Get it below two thousand if you get the uh, the older processor version. But this one right here is just like so good. It's got a 240 hertz display, an RTX 2070, an i7 9750H. So it's got the newest of everything. From its display to its graphics card to its processor, it's thick. It's non-max Q. Like this is probably my go-to along with the Aorus 15 for best price, best bang for the buck around 2,000 bucks. Do you have a tower PC and do you have SLI? I did, but I no longer do. I have just the Alienware Area 51 m So Oompa Loompa wants a thousand dollar Oh, I closed down the sheets. That's not the right one. Let's go to let's get back here. Okay. So again, if you want me to recommend something, please do like this little, I need to know the price, what you're going to use it for, the screen size, the weight, battery life. Okay, so Oompa Loompa wants something, $1,000, primarily used for schoolwork, but also light Steam gaming. 15-inch uh, screen, 120 hertz display, 
um, light as possible, lasts a full school day, 8 gigs of RAM plus 512 gig SSD. That's a lot to ask for under $1,000. If you said $1,300, I'd say there'd be a few different options for you, but under $1,000 is going to be tough. Something, something like the Dell G, again, Dell G7, I think is probably going to be your best bet, but you're going to, you're going to have to try to get the right configuration because there's a lot of different configs out there. You can get the, you get the GTX 1060 Max-Q, $1,200 for this one though, $979, SSD plus one terabyte HDD, 1050 Ti, $939. I don't think this has 144 hertz display though. That's the downside. Where the Acer Predators 300 does have 144 hertz display, which is really nice. So, and I, I don't know the battery life of the Predator Acer Predator Helios though. That's the downside here. So, let me let me just copy this link for you. But this is the this is this is one of the most recommended laptops out there right now for the money. I have not reviewed this. I've not been hands on with it, uh, but. It's it's a little bit thicker, but if you're if you're at a thousand dollar price point, this is about as thin as it's gonna get right here. Like this, the this the you know this is maybe the best performance for the money, I think, or really close to it at least. Um, but I would also look at the Dell G7, Dell G5, maybe the Acer Nitro 5. Um, those are all gonna be reasonable options. I'm trying to think if there's anything that is super budget friendly. I don't think so. Maybe. The GL63 has a 1050, though. Ideally, you'd want to get a 1050 Ti. Here's a 1050 Ti. I don't know. Ideally, in my mind, you want the GTX 1060 for 1,000. Like, that's like kind of the sweet spot that you'd want to look for. Okay. So a few different comments here. Sabonicus Gaming Pro says $1,800, no more. Good to gaming. Use AutoCAD, 144 hertz. Don't care about the size of the screen or the laptop itself. So $1,800, 144 hertz display. And you, you're going to do gaming and AutoCAD. So I got to say, I think it's the probably the Strix Scar. Probably 2060 if you want $1,800. Because the 2060 should be priced around $1,700. So that's, that's what I would say. Right there. Oh, it's off center. Oh no. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> that sucks. Anyway, all right. So that should be a little bit better. All right. So Ali Hamid wants to know Blade 15 RTX 2060 versus Triton 500 2060 in gaming. So the Blade 15 is going to have better build quality. The Blade 15 is also going to cost you more money. I believe it's going to be about $200 to $300 more. The Triton was $1,800. I think the Blade Blade 15 2060. Let's see what that is. ASM 50H. Yeah, so $2,200. Oh, here's $2,000 for a Blade 9750H. So you get the new processor and everything on that one. That's a pretty good deal. $2,000 for that, though. Ooh, $1,800. Okay, so it does get comparatively priced. Then. So the Triton versus the Razer Blade. What are we looking at here? I think the Blade is going to have better build quality than the Triton. Um, the, blade, the Blade is just going to be like, it's a unibody chassis. It's going to be the most rigid, best build quality you're going to run into. 
The Triton is going to be really close to it. It's going to have also really good build quality. Um, so between the two, the Blade's going to have better battery life for sure because it does have NVIDIA Optimus. Uh, the Blade, it's hard to say, but I would say the Blade might have a slightly better display than the Triton 500, like slightly more colorful, uh, better color gamut on it. Based on the reviews I've seen, uh, that's also off the cuff. I've, you know, it's hard to compare them directly um, without having them side by side and seeing the actual numbers. So, but they're really close. I, I mean, between the two, I'd recommend the Blade 15. And I would also say, anytime you buy any of these laptops, try to get some kind of warranty with them if you can, especially if you're buying a Razer one, because I know the Razer support can be a little bit hairy. I mean, all laptop manufacturers can be a little bit hairy, so that's why I try to buy mine from uh, places like. I don't know, like HID Evolution or Best Buy that have good warranties and good supports. So, so Shivan Curdy says, I heard the Blade has a lot of quality control issues, so I'm scared about not getting a good unit on first try from Amazon. If you're in another country, I can see how that's a bigger deal than if you're in like the United States where the shipping is free or very low cost. Alex Place says, I'm looking for a cheap gaming laptop, like under $500. Then you're probably looking at buying like a used Acer Nitro 5. It's probably what you're looking at. So the Nitro 5 brand new costs about $700. And you can get a GTX 1050 Ti in it. And it's going to be able to play like basically all games at 60 frames per second, or most games at 60 frames per second, if as long as you're willing to fiddle with the settings to get like better or worse performance. You know, like you said, it's low or medium, you'll get 60 FPS um, in most games, at least. Not the most demanding titles, obviously, but in in the majority of games out there. Okay, Dave Prizo says, what's your personal opinion about the 9750H versus the 8750H? Is the extra 100 megahertz boost really worth the new tax that they're charging? Uh, well, the nice thing about the tax is that so far from the laptops I've seen listed, it's only about a $50 price difference from the 8750H version to the 9750H version, which is a pretty small in, you know, increase in price. Um my thoughts are that it, the new 9750H, we saw some big performance jumps in my benchmarks testing with the 9750H, at least with the big, thick uh, MSI GT75 behind me. Um, so there must be some architecture improvements, um, some optimization going on beyond just the 0.1 gigahertz improvement there. So if it's only a $50 price difference, I would say, yes, it's worth it. If it's more like a $200 price difference, that's where it's probably not worth it. Um, but it also depends on the person, like how long are you planning to keep the laptop? Like if you want the laptop to last, you know, another year's worth of performance, maybe it's worth it. I don't know. Uh, but if you're looking to just get like the best bang for the buck, probably buying the 8750H in the laptop would be a better bang for the buck just a little bit, you know? Shivan Curdy says, should I risk it for the blade instead of the Triton? Not sure if I have to return to I pay shipping fees. Okay, so Shivan Curdy, if you're buying internationally, right, uh, I don't know what your situation exactly is like in every country that you're in, right? But but for example, right, you've got the you've got options like HID Evolution that's going to more reliably provide uh, checks on their hardware before they ship it. So if you're really worried about getting it done right the first time it's shipped to you, um, and you, and you really want to buy from an American reseller, I would say consider getting it through HID Evolution because they do fully check the system before you get it. And you can mention that when you order it through HID Evolution, you can mention, hey, I really need it to be done right the first time, so please double check the whole machine really thoroughly, and maybe they'll do like an extra double check for you. But uh, so far I've had few, very few issues from HID Evolution with the uh, laptops that I've had from them. So... Um, like, like, and, and I know that when I know the other, the other thing is if you get, if you get the, if you buy from HID evolution, you can also get an international prepaid shipping service. So if you pay the premium here, which is going to cost a bit extra, which is the downside, you can actually get free international shipping on any support 
Like if you're like in Dubai, I think you mentioned you're in Dubai, you'll be able to get free international shipping back and forth. You don't have to pay for it if the laptop breaks. And you can get up to three years of coverage on that, which can be big because shipping it back and forth well, one or two times can cost 200 to $400, right? So especially if you get good shipping with a warranty on it. Um, is the Razer Blade 15 or the Asus ROG Strix Hero? Um, I believe you're trying to say, is it better or worse? Which one's better? Uh, well, the Razer Blade 15, uh, if you get the RTX 2060 version, it's a non-Max-Q version. And if you try to go for the 2070 or 2080 versions, it's going to be Max-Q. So you're really paying a premium price for that performance increase uh, versus where the ROG Strix Hero, I believe that's the same as the Strix Scar laptop, you're getting the full uh, non-Max-Q RTX 2070. So that's going to give you much better bang for the buck. Uh, if you're going to get the 2070 version of those two laptops. But the 2060 version is probably going to be a lot closer in price and performance between the two. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we check out the Razer Blade 15, what are we looking at? Um, Razer Blade 15, GTX 1060 is 1576. Where's the RTX 2060 version? I think that one was $1,800. Let's see. $2,200. I believe that it varies in price a little bit. I think we saw one earlier for like $1,800 with the 2060. Let me just pull up Razer's official website. It's the best way to get the price. Do, 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 do. Twenty sixty right here is listed as twenty two hundred dollars. So that's pretty expensive for a twenty sixty, I think. And if you get the Strix, you're only the Strix Hero. It's basically the same thing as the Strix Scar, but it's slightly different. Um, it's a lot cheaper. Look at that. That's a 1070, and it's $1,700. Let's see if there's a... Let's just do the 2060 so we can do a direct apples to apples comparison of price. Um, 8750H, RTX 2060, 1849. So that's almost $350 cheaper to get the Strix Scar too. And I'd say the build quality is very similar between those two because the Strix Scar has like remarkably good build quality, um, especially for the money. So, okay. Uh, so if you guys want me to recommend stuff, please do include these five categories. I need to know your price, what you're going to use it for, the overall screen size, weight, and battery life that you need. I'm going to get a drink of water because I've been talking straight for one hour, so I'll be like... Just reaching behind me to grab water. Okay. Okay, so taking a look at uh, Vikoths. He says, I'm a new viewer to your channel. And by the way, your channel is amazing. Thanks, dude. Anyway, I'm looking to get a very decent gaming laptop because due to me going to college, I have a budget of $2,000. Any suggestions? Yes. So I would say your best two options are going to – well, you also – going to college, you probably want better battery life. Let me check the battery life on the Strix Scar. I think it has NVIDIA Optimus. I did do the review on it. I just can't remember. Let me see. Here's the 17-inch version. Here's the GL504. Okay, let's check the battery life on this guy. So it can get up to six hours of battery life. That's pretty good. Um, so I th this is my go-to. Like I just recommend it so much, but it is such a good overall laptop that it's hard to not recommend it when it's, you know, it's got the, you know, it's got the performance. It's got the overall slim size. Let me just pull up the. So and if you've got what was your budget again? Two thousand dollars. I think you can squeeze out the twenty seventy in that too. Look at this RTX twenty seventy. Six. Look, it's just so much bang for the buck right here. You've got 
an i7 8750H, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and a one terabyte HDD, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070, 15 inches, it weighs five pounds, has six hours of battery life. Um, let me just post this. This thing's got uh, 2029. So uh, this one, I think this one is probably like in the $2,000 price point, this is it. Like, I think this is the best one. All right. Yeah, it's just, it's so close. There's, there's other options, all right? But if you need something with battery life, this is going to be better than the Aorus 15. The Aorus 15 just doesn't have the battery life that you'll need to get through a whole day of classes, you know? Or this one, this one probably will. And it's got a really cool design. It's got, I don't know, I, it's a really nice metal finish on a lot of it, and then it's got this, like, soft plastic finish on, like, the palm rest and everything. It's got a camo look, which is kind of cool, and the backlight on the keyboard is really, really well done, too. And the keyboard feels good, too. Okay, Stephen Curtis says, since 9th gen CPUs are here, will 8th gen 2060 laptops see a price drop since I'm buying in May, end of May? Uh, yes, but it probably will be very, very small price drop, maybe $50, $100. It won't be a huge price drop. So um, the, the main area, if you want to snag a deal, would probably be trying to buy some person who's really impatient and they always want the best. They like buy the the eighth gen processor like this one, and then like a month from now they decide to buy some you know like the the 9750H version of the same thing. And they, they're like selling their old version of the laptop, you know. And then you're getting like a barely used unit. I don't know. Let's see if we can find something like that. Like here's an RTX 2060 pre-owned, $1,500. Look at that. That's freaking insanely good deal. I don't know. I guess you, I'd want to know a little bit more about the condition. It's like barely used. I and mean, it looks barely used. It's only been out for like a couple months. So at, at, at most, it's only two years old, or two months old. Three months old, I guess. But still. Here's here's a Strix Scar 2, $1,300. Brand new with a one terabyte HDD and 256 gig SSD. Um, and I have bought a number of my laptops from eBay. You know, like, like there's nothing wrong with buying it from eBay as long as the seller has a good reputation uh, and you've got some kind of like money back guarantee where you can return the laptop um, if, if there's something grossly wrong with it or they misrepresented it in some way. Um, but like, this is a great $1,300 open box. It's basically brand new. Um, and the condition of it looks just really good condition. So, I mean, that's that's some pretty insane performance for the money right there. Okay, so if you want me to make any kind of recommendation to you, I need these five things. Price, what you're going to use it for, screen size, weight, and battery life. Okay, taking a look at the comments again. Mark Swans, what is the what's the good gaming laptop on a fifteen hundred dollar budget? So, I don't think I've done a fifteen hundred dollar budget one yet. Let's take a look. Um, fifteen hundred dollar budget. Again, I would probably recommend the Strix Scar, but you probably can get like a ten seventy version of the Strix Scar, most likely. Like right here. Here's a 17-inch version with the 1070 for 1560. Strix Scar GL. I wouldn't recommend the Strix GL 703. That's a different design. Don't really love that design. I don't. I, don't know. I, I can't verify or vouch for that design. I guess because I haven't had that design in my hands before. It could be good. Um. Let's just 1070. Let's put for $1,500. We're looking at probably 1070 territory. For price point yeah like right here this is probably a good fifteen hundred dollar price point machine right here see that's 1060 but when you can get a 1070 instead of a 1060 you get the 1070 for fifty dollars more it's going to be totally worth it so i'll link a link for you this for you guys
Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't have any recommendations for portable monitors. Sorry, Jobus. I, I ain't got nothing for you there, sir. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We're looking at uh, Rudfit Vic Vagahasi says, my budget is $3,000. So what is the best laptop one can buy for $3,000? Let's think through this. First of all, I would say at $3,000, you're definitely going to want an RTX 2080. Like, for sure. Um, or, or maybe a GTX 1080, if you can get a better processor and stuff like that. Um, you, you say you budget $3,000. I don't know if you want a thin and light one or if you want like the most possible performance. Let's do $3,000, most possible performance. Uh, I'm thinking probably the area 51M. This is uh, this is my go-to right now for like because this is the one this is the laptop that I own the one that I use personally and uh, let me see if I can find the different configurations because this one's a little bit over three thousand but you can get them for under three thousand I think if you get the right config. It's taking forever to load. Dang, Dell's website is so slow. David Stark, when do you think Alienware will sell the Area 51M with a 240 hertz panel? Uh, they said middle of this year when I was talking to them, I believe, at CES. So should be sometime soon in the next couple months. Maybe they'll announce it. The 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 seven the thing is there's there's a number of 15 inch 240 hertz panels, but there's there's not any 17 inch that I'm aware of currently. So that, I think I think that's the issue that monitor manufacturers are needing to make basically a 17 inch version of the 240 hertz panel available, and then we'll see that as an option. And then the other thing is if you already have an Area 51M, you, you got to keep in mind that you won't be able to buy that and install it yourself, uh, not for a while, because they're going to be buying all those 240 hertz panels and then putting them into their, you know, the new laptops that are being sold. And so you have to wait till there's a surplus. So I, I won't be able to get a 240 hertz panel in my Area 51M that I'm looking at and pointing at uh, right now uh, for probably another six months at least. Um, but I would say a minimum six months, maybe even more. Okay, so. Uh, so you're not going to be able to get an RTX 2080 for $3,000 in the Area 51M. It's just not going to happen. Uh, just because the whole thing is expen as, is more expensive. But you're getting the desktop processor, which helps out in so many games today. All of the Battle Royale games, tons of the strategy games out there, they need good processors to be able to play at higher frame rates. Um, and And... Oftentimes the processor is the bottleneck and not the GPU, but ideally you'd love to have the most po power in both the GPU and the CPU, right? So, um, but uh, but for sure the RTX 2080 is a big upgrade from the 2070. So this is a decent option. It's a little over three thousand dollars. It, it's hard for me to hard for me to fully recommend that because it's not even under three thousand. Under three thousand dollars. What other recommendations do I have? Well, again, we're looking at the most power for $3,000. You're probably looking at a Clevo system. This is a thick, beefy system, but it's going to just put out the frame rates so much. Like It's going to put out the best frame rate aside from the Area 51M. We do 17-inch. And then we're going to sort by high price, and then we're going to go below. Probably this is this is the 1070. We don't want that one. TM1. Okay, right here. This is the one. If you're looking to configure something for under 3,000, it starts at 2,200, but you can upgrade it in a whole bunch of different ways. You can upgrade the processor. You can get it unlocked, undervolted, overclocked. Uh, I would say 
go on something like that. The 9700K would be a worthy upgrade. Or maybe the 9900K, depending if you want that. And then going with... You can you can upgrade the SSD. Let's just put a 512-gig SSD in there. Comes with a 1TB HDD. We'll have to add Windows to the install. Okay. So that's the basics. It gets us up to 2644. This is going to be pretty close to the most powerful of the mic. Where's the graphics card upgrade selection? Here it is. Okay. So if you want the RTX 2080... Oh, it's a steep price. Zeus? What's up, Nerdy Dan? Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, so we're looking at a little over $3,000 now. But we're getting the RTX 2080 in this thing now instead of the 2070, which is a big deal. And we can go with the base, base level desktop processor. And you can always upgrade the processor later because it's an actual upgradable processor in there. And you can get a smaller SSD or a bigger SSD you know, as needed. What I would recommend, actually, is just don't buy an SSD from HID Evolution because they're overpriced. Instead, buy them, uh, buy your SSD from Amazon and install it yourself. You'll save like $50 to $100 doing that. Um, but RTX 2080, $3,2400. So um, that so this is like the most powerful laptop for the money under $3,000. The other option is that you could go with something that's that's not maybe as powerful a processor, but it's going to be like really good performance. And that's going to be something like the, the GE75 Raider with an RTX 2080. Jesus, so cheap. $24.99 for an RTX 2080 non-max Q. And it's only six pounds. This is such a... I did a full review on this. Um, and I was really impressed with it overall, uh, but the CPU definitely is the bottleneck in some games. So you're not going to get as good a performance in this one compared to the other ones. Let's uh, 2499, RTX 2080, 75. So this would be another really good option for someone looking to get the most powerful under the most powerful laptop under three thousand dollars for sure. Rudfick Vegasia. I bought I bought my Area 51M from HID Evolution, um, and I'm really impressed with them. So like I've been really impressed with their service and support. I am a reviewer. They know I'm a reviewer, so they prop they probably take a little bit better care of me than they would of a typical person. But I think they have overall good service and support, especially from the people that I've talked to. And, and as a consequence of their good service and support, their prices are a little bit higher. ICS says, are you gay? No, I'm engaged to a beautiful, wonderful woman who's upstairs. Um, okay. So if you want a laptop recommendation, you got to you gotta give me the details that you need. So right here we're looking. So this, this spreadsheet right here is all of the new laptops, okay? This is all the new laptops that are coming out. And if you want to be able to – you, you can – you can go check out this spreadsheet. I have a link in the video description down below. Um, and you can check this out after the stream or like right now, whatever. Uh, but I have links to a bunch of the laptops here on the right. And then I have the prices here, like the, the refresh rate of the screen, the graphics card, the model name, number. Uh, all of the newer listings here that we're putting in now has even the memory, the SSD, the processor, how many hard drive slots, how much it weighs, what's the thickness of the laptop. Um, all of that's being listed there. So super useful sheet if you're looking for a laptop. Um, and again, link is in the description down below. Okay. All right. Here we go. Nerdy says, why would you ask that? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Shadow Nero says, so would you recommend the GE75 with RTX 2070 or the Strix Scar 2 with RTX 2070? I would say probably the Strix Scar 2 2070. The build quality was better on the Strix Scar 2. So there's this one. Let's see. And let's check out the prices too. I think the I think the GE75 is more expensive. Let's see here. 
GE75, RTX 2070, $2,200, $2,100. Yeah, so we're looking at $2,100 for the GE75, and I believe that's the last year's processor. Yeah, that's last year's processor. Let's do the Strix now. So the Strix SCAR, too, is only 2029 So you're looking at saving um, a decent chunk of money. Like seventy, you're gonna save seventy dollars going with the Strix Scar too, and then I think it has a little better build quality. That is also a 15 inch versus a 17 inch. You gotta keep in mind, so that's a little bit different size there. Um, so depending on if you like having a little more weight or a little bigger screen, you can have preference there too. I think the Strix Scar do offer a 17 inch version as well. Okay. What's a good starting laptop for an IT student? Around $1,500 to $2,000. I need something that can handle major use. So if you're going to be like major using it, I don't know what that does. that mean you're going to be dropping it all the time? Like what does that mean? Backpack? All, I'm guessing that means backpack, hauling it around, pulling it out all the time, and you're going to need it to probably do a lot of uh, rendering and, and heavy-duty stuff. The first thing I would say is you'll either want to repaste it and get a higher-end CPU. You get a higher-end CPU, repaste it for better thermal performance, and you'll have much better overall performance in your laptop in general. Um, if you're going to be taking it with you and plugging it in from place to place, you don't need a lot of battery life, uh, then I would say getting something like the... I guess you have... What was it? $1,800? That doesn't work in the price point you're looking for. So let me paste this in here so I can just... So you guys can see it too. Okay, so good starting laptop, IT student, $1,500, $2,000. I need something that can handle major use. I, again, it's hard for me to say. First of all, if you're going to be like traveling with it all the time, just be sure to get a good warranty on it. Buy it from someplace... Again, my top places to buy from would be Best Buy with their black tie protection, HID Evolution with their service and support upgrades. Just because by getting it from a good location, reputable seller, whether you can have a good warranty, good return policy, if something's wrong with it in the first 30 days, you can always return it for a full refund. I think that's super important. And then also, if there is something wrong with it and, and you have to send it in for warranty service, a, you hopefully want it done quickly, and B, you don't want to have to pay for $50 shipping back and forth, especially if you're international because then the shipping gets really expensive. So you want to really ideally buy from someplace that will have good service and support. Now, I think buying from a reputable reseller is how you, the best way to get the best service and support, but if, you're, if you don't want to splurge on that extra $200 extended warranty from like HID Evolution or whatever, and HID Evolution does have their own service and support. If you buy from HID Evolution and something goes wrong with it in the first year, you, you have warranty service through HID Evolution. You don't have to send it back. If you, if you buy a Razer blade through HID Evolution, you don't have to send it back to Razer if it breaks down. You send it back to HID Evolution, which is really nice because um, I believe they paid for shipping back and forth whenever I... My, my Oris... Uh, my Oris X7 laptop had keys that were starting to have the peel pa uh, paint peel on it. And when I shipped it back to them, they actually covered the cost of fixing the laptop when the manufacturer refused to cover the cost of fixing the laptop. So to me, that's like top tier service. Like, I don't know. Um, yeah. Skittles says, Gumba de la Custa. I, I don't know if that's a... <laughs> Anyway, okay. Uh, that means the vi love the vids, keep them up. Okay, cool. All right, did I get distracted? We're still talking about we're still talking about Arctic Virtues. Okay, he wants fifteen hundred dollars to two thousand dollars. <laughs> That's just not enough of, for me to go on, dude. You need to give me more. Do you need to use it for gaming? Do you need to use it for you know what are your other use cases? Uh, Strict Scar too. That's what my recommendation is for it there. Anyway, moving on. Okay. Is it a right time for an Alienware Area 51M with 9th Gen Core i7, i700K, or should I wait for the new 9th Gen Intel? So, Rootvik, uh, the Area 51M uses desktop CPUs, 
and the desktop CPUs came out like uh, about six or seven months ago. So those, those, it's a good time to buy the desktop CPUs already. Those have been out for a while. Um, the new mobile processors, uh, those ones are going to be interesting because we have the new 8-core 9980HK. That, those, that, that, that's a new 8-core processor that's really close to the 9900K in performance. So that processor in particular um, might actually be a really good option because a lot of these ultra-high-end laptops are going to be, uh, I guess, putting in this new 9980HK. And this new 9980HK might edge out some of these 9900K laptops. So there's a lot of laptop processor model numbers here, but the, th the main thing that you need to know is that the, the new laptop highest-end processors are going to be competitive with the desktop 9900K, which is basically unheard of. Um, so the Cinebench scores for this new 99 80 HK f didn't right here yeah here notebook check actually was able to run a Cinebench in a loop on this and it was really impressive so you can see that it uh, where is it right here it's scoring 1700 consistently that's really good. That's really good performance for a laptop processor. The best laptop processor performance we've ever seen. Um, is it as good as the 900K? No, it's not. My, my laptop can consistently hit like 2,100 or so. So it's about 400 points behind the 900K, but it's faster than any laptop processor we've seen today. Um, and that's only going to be, the, the main thing to keep in mind is that's only going to be in chassis that can actually cool that 9980HK. Because, yeah, it's just that's going to be a very hot processor. Tally Al. Okay. Talal asks Honestly, don't know if I should pick between the SCAR 3 or the new Helios 300 for game design around $2,500. So you've got $2,500. You need to design some games. I'm guessing you primarily need GPU performance for that, not CPU performance, but CPU performance is probably helpful as well. $2,500. I think my recommendation, honestly, is probably this, either the Strix Scar 2070 Uh, it looks like over something like this. This is $2,100. Or you could go with the GE75-2080. And you can get a better... You can get a better overall machine for the money at $2,500. Like, this is probably the most powerful machine you can get for $2,500 right here. And in terms of at least pure GPU performance... Something like that. Is Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot safe for laptops? Which is better, G, uh, GC Lid Extreme or Thermal Grizzly? So, Nicasio Talbo, I use Thermal Grizzly Cryo Knot, which is a paste based. It's not liquid metal based, uh, and it's it's very very close to performance as the Conductor Knot. So I would just recommend getting the Cryo Knot instead, so you don't have to worry about any kind of spillage causing um, damage to the the laptop. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my recommendation. What do I think of the MacBook Pro 1 terabyte? Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the MacBook Pro and let's maybe compare that to like the GE75, all right? MacBook Pro, do they do a 17 inch still? I don't know. Let's just take, take a look. Take a look. Oh, it's so stylish. It is so stylish, all right? The MacBook Pro is just god tier level design but except for utility where's the ports where's the usbs where's the sd card slots oh yeah you're gonna have to get accessories for those um let's take a look at the specs let's see what the specs on the latest macbook pros are because it changes a lot so 2400 dollars for the base 
the base price. All right, the cheapest one is $23.99. That's insanely priced. We've got a, a great screen. Freaking amazing screen on the MacBook Pro. 2880 by 1880 resolution. Uh, the downside here is it's not a high refresh rate screen. It's a low refresh rate screen. So, yeah. Now, it's a wide color gamut. 500 nits brightness. Insane screen quality. It's just going to be so good for video editing and photo editing. Um, one of the best screens out there for that specific purpose. Um, now, if you get the more expensive one, you get a Core i7 with a better turbo boost ratio. But they don't even tell you what the processor is. Are you serious? They don't even say the processor name and the technical specification? Are you joking me right now? That is so dumb. I'm in the technical specs. I want to see the damn technical specs. I'm kind of pissed that they don't show that to you. That's dumb. Okay, so it says Core i9. This has got to be the i9-8950HK in this setup. Okay. Um, and then we're also looking for, for, as far as GP performance, we're looking at the Radeon Pro 560. All right, let's just see how this Radeon Pro 560 versus RTX 2080 stacks up. Okay. Um, gee, I don't know. GPU boss, does it hit? Are they going to have actual benchmarks to compare here? It does not look like it. Uh, how about we just do Radeon Pro Firestrike score? Because I already know what the Firestrike score for the RTX 2080 is. Here, this this should give us a better comparison. Uh, Time Spy. All right, it it averages 1900. Okay, the my laptop with the R RTX 2080, which is going to be very similar. The or the the G the, the GE 75. We're looking at this one, right? Twenty four hundred dollars. $24.99. Um, it got, I think, over 10,000 points or close to that. Uh, let me pull up my... Pulling up my benchmark sheet. So this is the sheet where I keep all my benchmarks for all the different laptops I review. I actually make this sheet publicly available as well. Um... But I'm constantly adding new laptops as I as I do my tests. So here's my GT75 that I just did. Here's a GE75. Um, Time Spy. 8, 8,936. So we're looking at four and a half times the performance on the GE75 Raider compared to the MacBook Pro for graphics performance. Four and a half times more performance. And on top of that, it's cheaper. So that's my take on the, the MacBook Pro. It's just garbage performance for someone who wants to do games but yeah let's see here okay taking a look at your your comments again guys sorry for the tirade um What thermal pads do you recommend for the Razer Blade 15? What thickness? I'm not sure. You'd have to do some more research on that on your own. Uh, check out like notebook review forums, and they'll probably be able to tell you there. Marco Bogoslav. Marco, I'm just gonna say your first name. I can't not pronounce your second name. What gaming laptop would you recommend for a future student budget around $2,000? Uh, again, probably the Strix Star. 2070. It's just, it's so good for the money. You get good battery life. You get good, great performance. It's still very portable. Okay. If I want to get the Area 51M, is there anything to wait on, or should I just get it now? That's a good question. So the Area 51M, you have the latest processor. You have the latest GPU. Sure, you can buy it now. I think the only thing you might want to wait on, if you wanted to make sure you made the best possible purchase, is that the, the new 
9980HK processor is coming out. Um, and the, the, the new 9980HK is nearly as fast as the 9900K. So the Area 51M is a beefy and thicker laptop. And there will be some laptops out there with the 9980HK that will be thinner and will still be able to, to have almost as good a performance as for in the CPU department. Um, but those laptops are not officially announced yet. I don't think. Let me just see. Here. Laptops with 9980HK. You guys and I, you guys and me, are we're learning about these laptops at the same time. All right. I know the Aerial 15. It's going to have the 9980HK, but there's no way that then chassis is going to be able to cool it well enough to get maximum performance. Um, is it <laughs> Flying Scottman wants to know if his MacBook Air is crud? It, it, it's, as long as it does what you need it to do, that's fine. It'd be terrible for me. It would be, it'd be crud for me. What do I consider to be the top three gaming laptop brands? <laughs> I mean, I could do top five a lot better than top three. Hey, Hero. Hi, buddy. Top three, top five. I'm just going to list some of the ones that I like. I love Asus. I like MSI. Uh, I like Alienware. I like Razer. Did I say Razer? I like Razer. And, and in my mind, it's each of the laptop brands. It's not so much, hey, buddy, okay, come here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm getting the licks in. Um, for me, laptop brands, it's not so much about uh, your it, – it's, it's, it's like, like all laptop brands have failures. All laptop brands have successes. Uh, it, it's about the individual laptop itself. Does the laptop itself meet your needs? Uh, and what you need, like, do you need good battery life? Does that laptop have NVIDIA Optimus? Um, does it have a large battery size on the inside? Um, as far as reliability goes, I think they're all about the same. It comes down to the design and whether or not it feature, meets your needs. I think Razer has the best overall build quality because of that Razer, you know, aluminum uh, unibody chassis. Um, but there's plenty of other laptops manufacturers that have great build quality too. The Alienware laptops have great build quality. The uh, MSI laptops typically have great build quality. A couple of them, the more budget ones don't really, but um, you know, it just really depends on the individual laptop and whether it meets your needs. And I, I really don't think you should have brand loyalty really inside the laptop space. I think you, you just got to take each laptop on a case-by-case -case basis and see if it's a good quality of design and it meets your budget, meets your performance requirements, or has a good performance. For the, oh, my God, my mic. <laughs> Attack of the pupper. He's like, you're not petting me enough. Um, so that's kind of my take on it. <laughs> you guys want to see Hero up close? Let me let me make Hero bigger. Hold on, bud. Hold on. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yep. This is Hero. Mm-hmm. There's there's people through that camera right there. Uh huh. Yeah. Hero is the kind of dog that just will sit in your lap for hours and fall asleep. Um, if you know, when you sleep in bed, he sleeps right against the side of the bed with you. And uh, he's just freaking adorable. I love him. Okay. So uh, let me go back to the chat here. But I'm going to take a couple more requests for laptop recommendations. And then I'm probably going to end the stream. So please do. Let me know. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, let me know your like all of these right here. I need to know your price, your, what you're going to use it for, the screen size you're looking for, the weight and the battery life that you need it to last for. Okay, I'll put you down. Do you need something? Okay, I think he's okay. All right.
God Mod Productions says, I've been watching you since I was a kid. Love you, bro. Keep up the good work. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Uh, Joseph Burbo says, great answer. Is the Legion Y370 good for the price? Let me just go ahead and look at this while I'm waiting for someone to give me more another like laptop request or whatever. The Y370. Let's take a look. Honestly, I've only seen this laptop in passing a couple times. You know, I've never really viewed Lenovo as much of a gaming brand, but they've really put out some good gaming laptops recently. I probably should pay attention, better attention to them. Um, taking a look here. The, doing the, the quick glance. Those are really good sentiment scores. Dang. Especially for something that's like stock. 1220 consistently. So really good CPU performance. The battery life on it is uh, really good too. 13 hours if you go idle with it. So that's definitely has NVIDIA Optimus. 76 watt hour internal battery. It's got a 1050 Ti. How much does this thing cost? Y7, there, it's 730, not 370. How much does this thing cost? I need to get my hands on this thing for a review of this thing. Y730. Hmm. Definitely a very reasonable price on some of these, at least. I don't know if this is interesting. Do you have to buy this from like Lenovo Direct or something because they don't sell it on Amazon, looks like? Let's check out Lenovo's website. PC laptops. Do to do, do to do. The X series, the T series, where's the Y series? E series, L series, where's the Y series? Don't know why I can't find this on their. <laughs> their actual website without Googling it first. It's not a very good website design, that's for sure. Okay, so $1,400. What does this come with? Wait, is that an RTX 2060? It's an XQ, though. That sucks. Up to five hours, it says. 144 hertz. 5.1 pounds. On paper, this certainly seems like a very promising laptop. Though at $1,400, in fact that it's a Max-Q, I guess it's still reasonable bang for the buck. Um, very interesting, a very interesting laptop. Let's take a look at different models they offer here. So at $1,400, you get a 144-hertz screen, 10 SSD, RTX 2060 Max-Q. Got to keep in mind it's a Max-Q. It doesn't say that there, though. I wish it did. Um, 8750H. So you're getting good processor, RTX 2060. Yeah, that's a good deal. Uh, that is certainly a reasonable option for someone looking for a budget, a budget machine, a budget gaming machine. Carla says the Lenovo Legion lineup with the nine, new 9th gen chips with the 1660 Ti GPUs will release in around late May. That should be even cheaper. What's up, TJ Haas? Thanks for, thanks for stopping in again, man. Appreciate your donations last time on the last gaming stream. Um, okay. Uh, Sabatica says, hey, since the 2060 is slower than the 1070, the Asus Scar... 
1070 or the Helios 500 are good options. I think the RTX 2060 is actually faster than the 1070. Let me double check that, though. Check RTX 2060. Pretty sure that this one's going to be faster. Time Spy. Where's all the comparisons? There it is. Okay. Yeah, so the RTX Laptop 2060 is faster than the 1070 laptop by about 10%. So the RTX 2060 is going to be a better buy than the 1070. The performance goes 1050 Ti, 1060, 1070, and then we've got, I think, the 1660 Ti, and then we have the RTX 2060. It goes in that order, basically roughly in ascending, in ascending order. So if I take the Area 51 M model with the 9900 processor, there is nothing to wait for anyway. Uh, the only thing that you might want to wait for, David, is new laptops coming out with the new 9980HK. But if you really like the Area 51 M design right now, man, yeah, like there's, it's going to be that way for the next probably year uh, or maybe at least seven, eight months until the new desktop CPUs come out sometime in like October or something. And then, and then there'll be a new CPU. Uh, and you might be able to upgrade that. Maybe not, though. Depends on if the chip is compatible with the LGA socket that we currently have in, in the Area 51M. GD Epic says, just want to say, by the way, love your videos and will donate, but saving for a Switch. Dude, that's cool, man. Save for that Switch, dude. Thank you for the comment, though. Yeah, our shattered Lydicus says the 1650 and 1660 were also announced for laptops. Though honestly, the naming system is stupid. Dude, it's so dumb. Why did they not name it the 2050 and 2050 Ti? Maybe name it the GTX 2050 and 2050 Ti or something like that. It would be so much better. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, I think I think this is a fun little stream. Two hours of just constant recommendations and stuff. So uh, I'll have a link. I'm gonna put a link again to this spreadsheet here. If you guys want to go dive into the spreadsheet, check it out. It's the all the RTX laptops that I can find. Um, currently, we're basically making a full list of all the laptops available here, and you can like copy this and sort this and just like you know narrow down to whatever price point you're looking for like here's a six hundred dollar seven hundred dollar eight hundred dollar thousand fifteen hundred dollars like you'll be able to like hopefully you'll be able to find a laptop that fits your needs uh and then of course at the end here i also have links to a whole bunch of the laptops if it's not on amazon i have a link to the actual store from like dell or razor or whatever um and sometimes i have links to both i like having links to both when i can um but yeah so that's it for the stream guys i hope you guys enjoyed it and and uh, yeah, how does the Y740 compare to the Strix Scar you suggested? I'll do this last one, okay? How does the Y740 compare to the Strix Scar you were suggested? Well, the Y740 has a Max Cube GPU, and, and that's going to be a lower level performance than the Strix Scar, which has a full RTX. Do I recommend the GE75 Raider? Yes. So the Y740 is basically going to be weaker but cheaper. But the Strix Scar is going to be uh, a little bit thicker and a little bit more expensive, especially if you get like the RTX 2060 or 2070 versions. You can get the GTX 1070 version for cheaper than the Y740, and you'll probably get more performance from that because it's not a max Q. So, all right, you guys have a wonderful day. I'm going to call it there. I know you guys have lots of questions, probably still have more questions, but I'm going to call it there. Just because this will go on forever for now. But I'll, I might do this again. If you guys enjoyed this, please let me know. Because uh, it, it's a very interesting way to do a stream. Kind of just interacting with you guys. Go looking for deals and wheeling and dealing. Finding the best possible options. But uh, for now, that's it. I'll see you guys soon, hopefully. Um, and I'll have more, more videos coming soon. I've got this MSI behind me here. 
working on putting together a full review for this GT75. It's a mammoth of a, of a machine. So, but it's a, it's a process. Putting together a review takes so many hours between all the B-roll shots and putting it all together. So, anyway, peace. See you guys.